Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 20th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own visual novel style game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover importing and building a font file inside the Unity engine and we'll also create a proper dramatic fade in for our main menu. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, importing fonts into Unity has changed over time. If you're following this series in an older version of Unity, you may not have to do some of the steps that we use in this tutorial, simply because it's TextMesh Pro. So, in older versions of Unity, you didn't have TextMesh Pro as default like we do here. And that is the reason why we have to do the extra steps. Unity and TextMesh Pro isn't really able to read a font file. We have to do some extra steps and conversion and build a font file. So how do we do this? Well, firstly, let's go to our assets folder up here and let's right click, create a new folder and we'll just call it fonts. And for every font you import, you have to do the same step. So if you've got 10 fonts, you'll have to do the same thing 10 times. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the fonts folder and I'm going to drag and drop this font. Um, I am not going to put this font for you to download for free. I obviously don't have permission to distribute this font. So there are plenty of sites out there where you can download all kinds of different fonts if you want. This is just a random font that I've chosen, which was on my machine. Um, that's basically the reason why I can't distribute it, because it's not something I've created per se. Um, but if you are in an older version of Unity, I will cover this because I know people do tend to use different versions of Unity to get along. Uh, but we'll take the Start Game button, and on the text down here, you'll have something which says Font or Font Asset. Older versions of Unity that don't use TextMesh Pro, you can simply just drag and drop that font there. But obviously, because we are in a later version of Unity, we're actually in 2022 version and using TextMesh Pro, we're not able to just drag and drop the font. Why is that? Basically because TextMesh Pro cannot read this sort of font. So what do we do? Well, if we select the font and then up here, if we go to Window, down to TextMesh Pro, you can see we have an option for Font Asset Creator. So if we click this, we have a box open up. Now, how do we use this? It's actually very easy. There are multiple different uh, options that you can choose from, but we just want to get a font file in place for us to use in different places. So all we would need to do is drag and drop this font up here, or you can select this button, find the font and select it that way. So drag and drop. Uh, we'll keep it as auto sizing and we'll keep the padding set as whatever the default would be for you, because there's no point in us going to extreme lengths to worry about any of this. Um, what do we do here? Well, we can change the character set if we want to. Uh, I'm going to keep it as ASCII. Uh, render mode we'll keep as uh, SDF AA. There's, you can use the others if you want to. That is if your font is really expanded, but it's not in this case. Ours is just a standard font. Uh, all we do now is generate font atlas. It may take a couple of minutes depending on what your font actually looks like, but you will get well, you'll likely get these options that say characters missing from font file. Don't worry about those at all. Most of the time, these font files have every character you would feasibly need uh, inside an actual font. Uh, the rest of it, again, don't worry about it at all. Uh, once it's done, you can either click Save or Save As. And what it will do is it will ask you to save that asset. And you can see that mine's called Corbel SDF. I'm happy with that, so I can just save it as it is. And you'll notice this other font is created. So this font is now an asset of this actual font, and this cannot be used in a standard text box. So if you're an older Unity, you cannot use the asset. You have to use the text. Uh, obviously, this version, we can use this. So let's go back to our Start Game button and scroll down, and we've got here the font asset. We can just drag and drop. And there we go. So our start button font has now changed. It looks a little bit more dramatic. I know I've used dramatic a couple of times in this tutorial already, but that's kind of what we're going for here. Now it just depends where you want to apply your font. So if we want to apply it to every single button, we can feasibly 
select those buttons and drag and drop or select here. So rather than drag and drop, let's select our button and let's select power bell. And you can see all the buttons change in line with the font. Cool. So we can simply save that. What about the rest of the font? Well, I don't want every font to be the same. So let's work out what would look good in this font and what wouldn't. So if we go to scenes, let's go to our credit scene that we created last tutorial. And let's imagine what it would look like if both of these had the same font. So let's select, press play, see how it looks in this font. Are we happy with it or are we not? Hopefully we will be happy. And is it going to? Come on, Unity, sometime today. Don't just love it when Unity has a, a brief moment, we will we'll call it. See, I think that looks kind of cool. However, what I might do, just to show diversity in all of this, let's have the title set back as our original font and see how that looks. So this is where you can mix and match the fonts depending on what's going on. See, there is a slight mismatch between everything now. So in this instance, it might be wise to keep both the same font. Perfect. Let's save that. But what about the other scenes that we have? Let's go to our class scene. Let's go to that. And let's go to the canvas and let's go to our text box. And we've got character name. I think we will keep our character name as that standard font. And the speak text, I think we'll have as the new font we've just imported. And again, this is where it all mixes and matches. Next button, let's also have that as the new font. Uh, let's press play, see how it looks. So a lot of this is just play testing to make sure everything looks okay. And hopefully it should. Yeah. Yep, I think that's brilliant. I'm happy with that. So you take the time to go through all your other scenes, uh, change the font as you need to. Um, you know, it's, it's it's entirely up to you. There's no right or wrong in all of this. There's no, you should do this with your font. You shouldn't do this with your font. It is 100% up to you. So I did mention that I also wanted to add some extra stuff to the main menu. So I am going to save that uh, park scene now and head back to the main menu. Um, so the big thing about this is... We're at the stage now where we want to refine our game. We want to make it look like a really good game like you would expect to see. And that these buttons just suddenly appearing doesn't do it for me. So we're gonna create a fade in um, slightly different than what we have done previously. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI and let's go to raw image. Uh, we'll call this fade in. And let's set the anchoring as full and zero, 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 zero. And let's go to our animations and let's create the animation for fade in. Uh, so create, I'll put MM fade in. Obviously MM means main menu. Let's press the record button, first keyframe, and let's set the alpha as 255 because we all know the fade screens are done using the alpha. Uh, let's go to frame 120. So we fade in over two seconds and set the alpha to zero. And then let's stop recording, go to project, and let's go to MM fade in, which is that one, untick loop time. And let's press play to see how it looks. We're not going to be able to actually do anything with the main menu. Hopefully you've already figured out why, but that looks better visually. See, we can't do anything. Have you figured out why we can't do anything? Of course you have. It's because the fade in is down here. We obviously need to set a line of code now to turn this fade in off. So let's do that. Let's go to the menu control and let's go to main menu. And we need to declare this as a variable at the top. So serialize field. And it'll be a game object. And we'll call it fade in semicolon. And what it means is that after two seconds, we have to stop this from happening. Now, we do have coroutines down here. We could theoretically use them if we wanted to, um, but it's probably not best to. So what we can do is we can create another quick coroutine. So we'll say I enumerator. And don't worry about the amount of methods and coroutines in one single script. You know, some of these scripts that you can write in games can stretch for thousands of lines, have multiple methods, multiple coroutines. So don't ever worry about there being too many in one single script. 
Uh, and then we'll just call it stop fade. Oh, close bracket, open curly bracket. And we'll have yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And in brackets, two, because that's how long our fading in takes. Uh, and then after that, we'll say fade in dot set active and in brackets false semicolon. And then back up to the top where we have the void start. Let's put start coroutine and in brackets uh, the name of the coroutine we just put. So stop fade. Go close bracket, close bracket, semicolon and save. Let's head back into Unity. Now, obviously, uh, the fade in, we won't be able to click any buttons while we're fading in, but it's only two seconds for dramatic effect. So then after that, we should be able to click our buttons. So let's press play. And we should see our fade in. Awesome. Well, we haven't assigned it. So let's go to menu control and let's actually assign the fade in. And then try again. See, notice down here, we have that. So whenever you make a mistake in, in Unity or anything, you'll find out by using the console. Yeah, but we faded in nicely, and we can click all of our buttons. Excellent. So, next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to... Let's see, what can we do? Let's add in a splash screen, uh, and let's link everything together uh, via the main menu. So everything will come full circle as a game. Um, and we'll also finish off the buttons that we have in the main menu as well. We need to get make sure everything is functioning. So remember to subscribe and click that notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. And I will see you next time.